All right, you guys, I am joined by Whiskey and, uh, and Jizz. Is, is that your name, Whiskey and Jizz? It's, no. uh, it's very close. It's uh, Jinzo and Tonic. Oh, yeah, that's right, right, right. Jin, Jinzo <laughs> and Scotch. Guy. Yeah, yeah, J Jizno and Scotch. <laughs> something, something like that. Uh, you can make fun of my name, too. You'd just be like, oh, aren't you supposed to be maybe, maybe, or yes, yes, or something? Like, go, <laughs> go maybe, maybe somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> but today, guys, we are joined by Jinzo and Tonic. And today, this is episode three of The Men Who Stare at Goats. The Stare at Goats passionately series <laughs> and um, we're gonna be talking about Xerion universe replacements because as shown um, in episode one of the men who stare at goats I went into detail as to why Xerion universe actually isn't goats um, I used to be an Xerion a universe proponent in goat formats uh, but apparently it was never the format I thought it was a card in the format that people just didn't want to be in the format which is why I was an Xerion proponent but apparently it was never actually in the formats meaning I'm on the other side of the argument now yeah. so today we'll be talking about Xerion universe replacements uh, because because it's very important to replace Xerion Universe, especially because Xerion Universe uh, pretty much solves the format on its own. It really does. It's 1900 defense that Parshath cannot get around. It's 1800 attack that is piercing over goat tokens, and that 1800 attack itself it's hard to get over unless you unless it's attacked by a monster like Berserk Gorilla or just uh, you know slammed into by another 18. Um, it's, it's really hard to get over. Um, or maybe a Blade Knight, you know, with only one card in hand that'll get to 2000 attack. But the point is, um, Xerion Universe uh, fixes a lot of the problems in the format, and since it was never in the format. We have to fix those problems without Xerion Universe. We've got a lot of replacements for it. It depends on how you want it and what you want it to do in your deck. So the first the first option I have for, for everyone here, if you, if you just want to go for like a beta aggro deck, you can use something like Goblin Attack Force with 2,300 attack. Obviously it has the effect of when it attacks, it goes to defense position. But it is there if you want to go beat over Air Knights. Oh, or we're just starting with the rudimentary it. caveman. That's what we're starting with, just the biggest attack. Oh, yeah, 100. Just going for. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. We'll start there. Okay, we're going down that along those lines. Oh, yeah, and you can also search uh, Goblin Attack Force with Rota, which is always good. If we're going to start with the brute force here, um, along the same lines, it would be Berserk Gorilla next. Oh, 100%. Uh, just because Berserk Gorilla is, uh, it can be souped. It's 2,000 attack, though. It's 1,000 defense, so it can be, su can be souped, it can't be searched because it's a beast, but it's 2,000 attack. You mm -hmm. just summon it, and it's 2,000 attack. Yeah, sure, it has to attack, but that just, I just, I use that to my advantage. I use that to eat up Sakuretsu's for fucking breakfast, dude. Exactly. They, like, have, to, they have to stop it. They have to mm -hmm. stop it somehow. It's like the brain. They just have to get rid of it straight away. I love it, dude. Uh, Berserk Gorilla is a fantastic card. It comes in and, in and out of a, a lot of my decks, a lot of my aggro decks and goats. It comes in and out. It's a fantastic card. No, it's yeah, you're right. Like people, people have to DD assailant it or warrior mm -hmm. it or suk it or something just to get rid of it because it's it's big and especially if you, it's a four size, so you just normal summon it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's great. It's and, nice and, 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 in the right situation, you're you're uh, destroying stuff and then using it as um, a saku bait. In the wrong situation, it's nothing but suk food. But now, if, if so, this, those are the two main ones that I can see or know of that are good for high attacks if you want to have the high attack Xerion sort of thing. If you're going for more of a 1-8, but with an effect, I would look at something along the lines of Haiku mm -hmm. as a replacement. Um, so I don't know if any of you, it's, it's a pretty well-known card, but when this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can target up to two monsters in their graveyard, banish those targets. Then also your opponent cannot banish cards from their either player graveyard. So that works well, very against Chaos Dex. Especially because chaos, chaos are back. so uh, well represented yeah. in goat format, yeah. It's 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 huge. It's it, Kaiku is such a good card against pretty much most of the meta at the moment, um, and would be for me one of the straightforward swaps for um, Xerion. Yeah, um, and Kaiku's also actually good against uh, ne the next card I wanted to talk about um, following yeah. along the lines of beaters. Uh, Bazoo the Soul Eater, he may not be, um, you know, 1800 attack, but he comes out of 1600 attack, but he gets up to 25. You banish up to three monsters. The errata for goats is monsters, not cards. So you banish yeah. up to uh, three monsters and he gets to 2500 attack. That'll get over um, that'll get over um, Chaos Sorcerer. That'll get over just about anything, really. Gets over Jinzo. Um, mm. Gets mm. over um, uh, a Vampire. Fire Lord, uh, any any big monster, Parshath that gets over all that stuff, um, and just uh, maybe not played against uh, 
a deck that's playing Kaiku because you won't have any monsters to use uh, for a Bazoo's effect. <laughs> but yeah, the Bazoo the, the, the Bazoo the Soul Eater is a really great card. It gets over Jinzo, all that stuff. So um, you were talking about DD Assailant earlier. Um, yeah. DD Assailant um, is a, a good Xerion replacement. Uh, it can't be suited because it's 1600 defense. It's 1700 attack. Um, it banishes anything that, it, that destroys it by battle. So that, that's yeah. Berserk Gorilla, that's Parshath, that's anything. I mean, yeah, like they'll, I mean, they'll still draw a card if they attack, you know, over it with Parshath, but you're going to banish that Parshath. From what I saw before, people were using DD Assailants before Xerion was legal and they almost subbed it out initially. So DD Assailant was in the position of majority of decks before Xerion mm -hmm. even came along. Yeah, it's it's it just because like it's 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 a guaranteed one for one. And also yeah. it pairs really well with Book of Moon because like uh, so let's it, it's really good to try to absorb uh, Sakuratsu's with especially with Book of Moon because you would try to poke with your um, assailants instead of like your big gorilla or whatever you don't want to lose it just depends on your hand and your uh, but or your kaiku or whatever. So you're attacking with your um, assa assailant and then it gets sakued but you just book it and then you have this 1600 defense that they're going have to get around so they're gonna ban they're gonna have to waste a knock on it or um or they're gonna have to attack over it and uh get something banished either way 1600 defense is not bad and um dd assailants even though um it's not the best against chaos because good chaos players will play like their uh, chaos sorcerers and stuff in defense position um i mean they will and they won't some players like will play them in attack position because they know players are on to sasuke and stuff it just depends either way though dd assailant is a rota searchable banishing out it gets rid yeah. of something it's it's a shittier warrior lady but it still banishes something for good it is one yeah. of the best beaters in go format by far oh, no. this soldier is another one that's a but, lot of people yeah yeah i, I would i wanted to talk about a bit soldier but you know just sure oh no i okay let me let me leave this the soldier next one no next no no one. you I'll talk about a bit soldier no you <laughs> no that's fine, that's no, fine. no you talk okay. about a soldier okay okay so basically a soldier <laughs> <laughs> So, so this soldier, guys, uh, 1,800 attack, 1,300 defense. You can discard one light, um, one water monster from your hand and return a card on the field to your opponent's hand, or to the hand. So that can be used on your side of the field. A lot of people use it with uh, premature burial, and then you get it back, your monster mm -hmm. still remains in the field, and you can summon another monster from oh, the grave. Debatably um, the best combo in GOAT format, by uh, the way, the prima the soldier it's combo. Dirty. It's nasty. <laughs> it's, so nasty. It's, it's ridiculous. Or you can um, send back a back row or a monster and just attack for game. Um, I love using it on BLS or Chaos Sorcerer because then mm -hmm. they've really used resources in the grave and they just might not have any left. It's dead hand, yeah, dead hand. Um, yeah, it's such a it's such a great card. And two, and people generally play two Xerion, so it's a nice two for two. Um, yep. And you're generally playing uh, Sinister Serpent in your deck anyway. And so that's Tribe Infecting just, Virus, yeah. So I, since you're already I, playing I, those two waters, add the two waters for the two Xerions to this exactly. Prove Extended list, you already have another deck. Exactly, it just fits in beautifully. Going on to another, uh, like, if we're going to look at a little bit of lights and darks now. You can look at the skilled white magician or the skilled dark magician. Mm -hmm. um, they've got the, probably the, the closest stats to Xerion. Uh, Xerion. Yeah. The white is, I think, 1,700 attack, 1,9 defense, which is nice. So you can, if you want to be a little bit more of a defensive player, you can play that. Yep. Where the skill like, is 1,9 attack, 1,7 defense, and that's obviously if you want to be more oh, of an aggro. And that 1,9 attack is so nice. Like, it's over anything but Gorilla, pretty much. Like it, Yeah, it's... it's it's and, amazing. And you can honestly play that over Gorilla because obviously 19 gets over all the 18s and you're not like running this Gorilla that has to attack. So sometimes it is nicer yeah. to have the skill dark, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, no, 100%. And then, you, and then you can also just like play it how you want to play it. So if you don't want to have to attack that turn, you can just like wait it out. Um, and there's also a dark, and that's exactly what Xerion is, another dark in the grave. Exactly. Um, um, and then yeah. the, on the subject of uh, DD monsters and other 18s, though, um, a couple that I wanted to talk about. Uh, we were talking about Sasuke earlier. <laughs> Uh, briefly mentioned mentioned it when I was talking about DD Assailants. So um, treat DD Assailants as being really effective. I mean, because it is really effective against uh, face up attack position uh, chaos monsters. Because you attack into them, you know, unless they have Sakuretsu yeah. or something or mere force to block your attack, you're going to get rid of that chaos monster. It's gone. Yep. Um, okay. Now, following that, if the monster's in defense position, though, how do you get rid of it? Because um, the assailant has to be destroyed by battle. Um, exactly. Lady will get it, but because Lady's badass and doesn't care. She never did. Yeah. <laughs> but how do you give it a defense, defense position? 
Well, it'd be nice if there was a road of searchable target that got rid of. Oh, there is. It's <laughs> 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 it's uh, Grandmaster Sasuke, guys. Um, so it's uh, eighteen one thousand. So it can't be suit. Sucks. Whatever. But um, it's a light. So that's good. And it gets rid of any face-up. It automatically destroys any face-up defense position monster. So it could be a uh, Chaos Sorcerer that's been up on the field already, that's already banished something of yours. Get rid of it. Um, or um, it could be Spirit Reaper. Because Spirit Reaper is annoying. Well, yeah. A lot of decks will play Spirit Reaper. so many Spirit Reapers with it. It's ridiculous. It's great. Um, and then it kills uh, Big Shield Gardener. Uh, Big Shield Gardener is a, is a card that a lot of decks will play because it's a, a searchable warrior. That's 2,600 defense that can't be knocked. It's... Garden is actually a good card in Goats, guys. It's underrated for sure. Uh, modern players play it all the time. And then also on the subject of 18s, another DD monster in particular I wanted to talk about. It's one of my favorite cards in the format. Might be my, my favorite card in the format is DD Survivor. Um, mm. Especially with uh, decks like Chaos Warriors that people, you know, that people are playing right now and it's been running around on Dueling Book and stuff right now and people think it's good right now. Um, DD Survivor is really good because like it's good against any Chaos deck. They don't want to banish DD Survivor. That monster is going to come back. And if you are playing any sort of aggro mirror match where they're playing DD Assailants or if they just, you know, do the typical move of Summon Lady instead of Dust Past or so something like that, you just fuck them up with Survivor. Uh, you're gonna be a monster up on them because that that survivor is gonna come back and they're out of monster like DD survivor is great against DD monsters You just it's great in the aggro mirror match because of you know being so good against uh, DD monsters And then oh, yeah. um, once again uh, something that I talked about on the channel before uh, you, the, the classic strategy with um, DD survivors to play uh, uh, Three Sakuretsu armor with it against chaos because they'll switch their chaos monsters to attack position if they're in defense because they don't want to banish um, survivor because there's no point it's just gonna come back anyways and uh, they'll go for the attack and then you Saku the uh, attacking chaos monster so DD survivor guys uh, multiple uses the 1800 attack so bare minimum it could be used as a dark beat stick it, it's one of my favorites um, yeah, it's one of my favorite cards in go format by far also, I love DD survivor DD, DD survivor and um, grand master you mm. can get an LT guys like yeah and they're very Dude, I actually have the ulties. I wish I had them right next to me right now to show on camera, but I do have both of them in ulti. Yes, I do. Dude, and they look so good in ulti. Yeah. Like, all you can get Xerion is in Secret Rare, and we know ulti is just the one. Like, come on, guys. Yeah. So I was speaking to a lot of people with regards to what they main use for Xerion was and why they enjoyed it the most, and it was for killing goats, mm -hmm. right? And because it's goat format, you kind of want to get rid of goats. I Generally, I'm not seeing a lot of goats being played currently in the format, but obviously everything's changing from month to month. And the goats I would is a fantastic two... card, though. Do on paper it absorbs four attacks at the bare, bare minimum, oh, unless yeah. they're playing something like Shira Priest. Like it generates four monsters. It's a plus three right on the spot or whatever. Plus, it's, it's, it's oh god. Dex, decks are made. Dex are, Dex are made to counter it. Mm -hmm. Essentially, it's so powerful. And the two cards that I have, people have been telling me to talk about is Enraged Battle Ox, which is basically a piercing. A piercing 1 7, kind of mm. like Xerion, but it doesn't have to limit it to 1 4 like Xerion does. You can just take a 1 7 straight away. Um, and then the other one, which everyone's saying is a very best straight replacement just to kill goats, is Azura Priest. The Spirit 1 7 can attack every monster on your opponent's mm -hmm. side of the field. It's one of my favorite it's, cards in the format, too, actually, mm. Azura Priest. Um, okay, go say what you're going to say about it, and I have some things no, to add about it okay, as well. Um, it, it's a life, it's a 1 7. Oh, it does so well. You summon it, you destroy every monster on their side of the field, obviously with below 1,700, and then it returns to the hand, so they can't snatch it, they can't get rid of it. Exactly. It's, it, it is... Everyone <laughs> thinks that um, Tsukiyomi is the destroyer of Monarchs, but it's actually a zero piece, because Monarchs, their whole thing is to use your board against you, and you if you do don't it. have a monster, they can't touch you. So you just keep on summoning it, and you just keep on poking, and just keeps on coming back. It's yeah. it's ridiculous. And um, if they have, let's just say, a tribe infecting virus and a DD warrior lady on their side of the field, and they have two monsters up, even though the, you shouldn't commit two monsters like that because of Snatch Deal. But, uh, yeah. You also have to fear a Shira Priest because I'm going to smack over that tribe infecting, and then I'm going to smack over your lady and two for one your ass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what's going to yeah. happen. <laughs> Like, Azura Priest has multiple uses, and that's exactly what I was going to say, is because it returns to the hand, it dodges Monarchs and it dodges Thousand Eyes. Speaking of my favorite cards in the format, though, um, this doesn't do piercing damage like um, Jinzo was just talking about, but one of my favorite cards in the format, and something that I, that I literally play three of in all the decks I've been working on, is Blindly Little Goblin. 
um, on the subject of, of getting around Monarchs and getting around Thousand Eyes Restrict, Blind Little Goblin is a roto-searchable 1800 warrior that cannot be suited because it's got 1500 defense, it cannot be sucked up by Thousand Eyes, it cannot be snatched stolen, and it cannot be brain controlled by Monarchs. You just summon it and it stays on the field and they can't do anything with about it but Sakuretsu it or attack over it if they have something to attack over 1800 with. Dude, that is spicy and it's searchable. Mm -hmm. Which is spicy. Playing the little goblin at three because against all the good decks in the format and against Snatch Deal, which is one of your main power cards that every deck is playing in the format, you don't care about them. You just, you just mm. they eat shit to Blind Little Goblin. Uh, Blind Little Goblin's fantastic. And um, I guess, like, um, before we get into some of the more techie ones uh, and like burn damage ones, I guess I can cover just Mummy and Fear real quick. Just because they pretty yep. much do the same thing. Um, speaking of 1800s, a mummy, uh, a regenerating mummy is a card I've talked about on the channel before. It returns to the hand if it gets duoed, um, or if they're playing a monarch deck where you keep talking about monarchs. If they are playing with Thessalos monarchs, for example, and they Thessalos you, that mummy's going to come back to your hand if it gets Thessalos. It's really nice. Um, Fear from the Dark will special summon itself. It's, it's 100 less attack. It's 1700 attack instead of 1800 attack, but it will special summon itself. So Fear from the Dark is something else uh, to consider. It's a pretty good card. Um, I've seen um, players play it. Technically, if you think about it, um, because of Mummy and Fear, m uh, zombies are the most duo-proof deck. Literally. Like, because of Mummy, Fear, and if they're playing the Serpent too, God forbid, you can't duo them. Like, you're just... Also, the 2-8 <laughs> Zombie, that it's also, if it's discarded from your hand, it gets special summon. Ah, very uh, true, yeah. Another thing that you can put into your deck that's also dark, um, but if you want to be a little bit more defensive, is a Gravekeeper engine. So it's two Gravekeeper Spied, and a Gravekeeper's... Oh, um, the name's slipping my mind now. A Guard, Guard, the one that bounces. Yeah, okay, a Gravekeeper Guard with one uh, nine defense, and its flip effect is... So the Spies are one to attack, 2,000 defense, and when they're flipped, you can special summon a Gravekeeper in attack or defense position from your deck. Um, to your side of the field in face-up position. And it also just helps thin your deck out if you're using the spies. Um, and then you, you generally want to get a guard, have a Book of Moon, flip it, return opponent's monsters, or you can just like bait them to attack it in the face-up attack position, flip but they do damage and you return their monster. Yeah. Uh, wham, bam, you bam, it hurts. And they're also all dark. Yeah, so. and, and if you're playing against, uh, even if you, that was actually a classic uh, trick in uh, aggro decks, and, like when they side out their Nox, you put it, you side it in a Gravekeeper engine because, like, yeah, yeah, it's cheeky. <laughs> but, yeah, it's uh, great. Uh, speaking <laughs> of uh, flips, though, um, uh, Night of Saint Lent. So. Um, yeah. Night of St. Lent uh, is a card, guys. Um, I highly recommend for playing in Goats. Matter of fact, I'm just gonna be blunt here. In my real life, like goat control deck, not like my aggro deck or my chaos deck, or the my actual real life goat control deck, I main deck Abyss Soldiers and Night of Salence now. Not even messing with you. That's hectic. Dude, it's, it's crazy, and the reason, dude, and it totally yeah. works because, like, I mean, yeah. you're, play, you're playing tribe and serpent anyways. You really are. I mean, you, you are playing those anyways. Put in the abyss soldiers. You really fuck people up, and they never see it coming in goats. They never really? do. They're like, especially in eighteen in goats, you just fuck them up. And then uh, night assailant. Yeah. Um, if they do owe you, you just get your face back, or if like you know you discard it off an effect later or whatever you get, or like we're off a of charity because the assailant does work off a of charity. You get your face back, and you just go even more plus on their ass. Like, I'm serious. Um, Night of Saint Lent duo proofs, um, and if it does clog in your hand, you can always set it and destroy a monster. And it doesn't destroy just the monster that attacks it; it selects. So you pick a monster on their side of the field, face up, face down, does not matter. It destroys a monster. It's a really underrated card in GOATS. Of chaos uh, control players have played it, um, you know, in chaos decks for a long time, but um, not many people play it in other decks, and it's a really good card. Guys, another one that people like, may be a little bit on the fence with, and I've taken inspiration from this card from my 2004 deck, but the card's called Thunder Nyan Nyan. It's a light 1-9 monster with 1,900 attack. And I actually have to look that up. That's so funny. Thun I forget what yeah. that one does. I yeah, was just yeah, bragging yeah, earlier it. about having this card pool memorized, and then you just blew my <laughs> mind. <laughs> <laughs> so this card's one of my favorites, and I'll tell you why I like it so much. But basically, if there's a non-light monster on your side of the field, um, this card gets destroyed. So this card can only be on the field if it's by itself or if with other light monsters. If another monster on the field comes, it'll die automatically and why mm. so it, it's so people are like oh that's problematic you don't want your monster to die but you kind of want your monster to die if you need a light in the grave right so, so, <laughs> exactly so and she's 19 like wow yeah she's okay. 19 
she's a problem, so people are going to try and get rid of her anyway. Yeah. Uh, you can get her to grave if you want her to grave, if you want to push for game. And that's why I'm a big fan of Thunder Nyan Nyan. Not uh, bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a big fan. Um, another another light that I mean we were mentioned we were talking about earlier that I think you want to tell everyone about. I'm not sure, but uh, the the machine, the one seven. What uh, one one seven machine? Oh, reflect bounder. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they take the damage when they attack, and it's just magic cylinder. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the card was actually uh, limited to one during the format. And see, uh, and it's not really that hard to get around. Like Reflect Bounder, guys. I'm, I'm not gonna like sugarcoat Reflect Bounder. I don't really like the yeah. card that much. Like I, I, I think it's mm. an interesting card. I messed with it before. It's not a bad card, but I, I would say that on this countdown, in my opinion, it's one of the weaker ones on this countdown. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But it's not a bad card. Um, I've seen Reflect Bounder in decks. I've definitely uh, uh, had some head scratcher matches uh, with Reflect Bounder. Um, it just doesn't happen very often because usually people aren't playing it and it's really easy to get around because you can sack your wit, uh, you can book it, you can you do a lot, a lot of things to it. So it's a good card and it can get you um, some damage in. It is 1700 attack, which is not the worst, and the 1700 will get, get over a lot of things, a tribe infecting, uh, DD warrior lady, etc, etc, etc. But um, it's just, it's it's not the best. And another one that's, that's really good, is not, but not the best, is a Slate Warrior. Um, although yeah. Slate Warrior comes in the, the what, that world championship pack, like the parallel secret, like Game Boy rarity, which is really yeah. cool. Uh, it's really kick ass. But uh, yeah, Slate Warrior, um, it's got some of the weirdest stats probably on this countdown or on this list because it's a, it's a Wind Fiend, if I remember. And, yeah, Wind uh, Fiend, 1 9 attack, 400 defense. Yeah, and but if it's, it's flipped it's something, it gains, it gains, right? When it's flipped, it gains like 400 attack or something. 500 attack and mm. defense. What's really nice about it is if this card is destroyed by battle, the monster that destroyed it loses 500 attack of defense. Mm -hmm. So it's actually, yeah, it's, I mean, it, it is just put a dice on them. their monster, <laughs> like, yeah, and it's, I don't people, know. People Tsukiyomi, Tsukiyomi quite a bit, uh, so they destroy it, then Tsuki goes back to hand, and then the effect doesn't stay. But um, it's it's just another it's just it's just like I was saying in the beginning, guys. It's it's whatever you want your your deck to do. If you want it to be mm -hmm. aggro, defensive, like you need to you need to do and do your research on all the cards that we're chatting about. And just like play around, like that's the whole thing. Like we can show you deck builds, mm -hmm. but like we want you to go out there and be creative, like make a new deck, like do something right. insane. Right. Um, to end strong though. Um, some other ones. Um, I'll let you talk about uh, Mirage and Pitch Dark because I actually don't have very many uh, s uh, scenarios with those because I actually don't use those very often. I've, I've teched them in Chaos and stuff. You know, I've teched them in Aggro yeah. before, but I don't really have a whole lot of experience with those. But Blade Knight, though. Yeah. Blade Knight is a fantastic card. Um, I, do, I, I personally don't run three of it in anything because I think it clogs. Uh, I see people run three of it all the time. It is good at three in, uh, what's that, a Tiger Stun because the, the monster yeah. counts lower anyway, so, like, it, it's fine. Uh, but, um... Blade Knight, guys, it kills, if it's the only monster on the field, on your side of the field, it kills any flip. Like, what more can you ask for? Like, you never really commit a second monster to the board anyways, unless you're really just trying to go in for fear of snatch steal. So, or in, in just other things, or, you know, you, you always try to maintain one monster. You always try to be ahead in monsters, but you never overcommit in goats. That's just, it's an art. So, um, yeah. That, that being said, Blade Knights is usually going to be the early monster on the field anyways, and if, and if you only have one card in your hand or less than one card in your hand, then it's going to have the added benefit of being the only card on your side of the field with 2,000 attacks, so good luck getting over it. It's it's amazing. Like um, That 2,000 attack, will I've, like that, that will smack into a Vampire Lord and kill it, because I think if it's destroyed by your Sakuretsu, it's just going to come back. So if mm. you, that, that'll get it over a Berserk Gorilla, it'll smack into a Berserk Gorilla. That'll get over their assailants, and you can banish your Blade Knight or whatever, you know what I mean? One for one, just get rid of the dang assailant. The thing is, like, Blade Knight has so many different uses other than just killing flips because of it being able to get to 2,000 attack. Having that Rota Searchable 2,000 attack is really good. I mean, you can you can play Zombira, which is a, which is a card I guess we can have on here because it's twenty one hundred and it's warrior yeah. searchable. Um, but I mean, you can you can run a search twenty one hundred and have Zombira, but Zombira doesn't kill flips like Blade Knight does. Blade Knight is a fantastic card, guys. Blade Knight is amazing, and then, plus it comes in that ten secret rare. Like, ooh, it's one of my favorite secret rares of all time. The one I'm going to mention now isn't. I would I would always tend to go for Blade Knight over this. But like I said, it's for whatever you guys want to do. Um, it's a card called Mirage Dragon. Basically, during the battle phase, your opponent can't activate trap cards. And that can come in 
so clutch at the end of the game where you're needing just, just to finish it off and they've just got a back row. Having like a, both a light and a dark, so pick your attribute here that doesn't care about traps, doesn't give a shit about mere force and allows you to get through for game, it's not bad to me. Some uh, burn damage cards, I'm gonna talk about some piercing damage cards, I should say. Um, Spear Dragon, um, that's probably my favorite one right now, uh, besides Exer good old Xerion himself. Uh, Spear, Spear Dragon's good because it's 1900 attacks, so that'll get over most monsters like we've been talking about, because most monsters will stop at 18, like Haiku and other good monsters, they'll stop at 1800 yeah. attack. So that Spear Dragon will get over them. Uh, Spear Dragon also will do that full 1900 burn over a goat token, which is uh, actually really nice <laughs> so uh, the, the only downside is that it goes to the defense position but if you have a sakuratsu armor you don't really care so yeah um and then the other one was mad sword beast just because that one does piercing damage um it's uh, these cards once again i don't i don't uh, consider them to be better than a shura priest um spear dragon maybe in certain scenarios just because it will do 1900 damage which is nice uh, that's almost 2,000. That's, that's, that is nice. It's like a quarter of your opponent's life points right there. So, um, yeah. Uh, but none of them will be, beat a Shura Priest to me. I think a Shura Priest, um, probably, in my opinion, when it comes to these Xerion replacements, replacements that we've talked about, uh, like cards like uh, Blinded Loyal, Blade Knights, um, a Shura Priest, and a few others, like uh, 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 DD Assailant, and a few others, like, kind of stick yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Thunder Knight in the end, the end though. That one got, dude, that one got me thinking because for some reason, I'm, I'm not shitting you, dude. I thought Thunder in the end, the end needed to have another light on the field. Like, not herself. No, no, no. It can, it, yeah, if, it, if it's, it can be only lights on the field. Um, if another so, monster comes from the field, it, it dies. Right. Like, no, what I'm saying is I misread her this entire time. Like, I, <laughs> I, I, I thought that she needed another light beforehand before you summoned her because I was like, oh, sweet 19. Oh, this is trash then. But now I'm like, yeah. now all over, I'm like, oh, sweet 19. Like, damn it. I read it backwards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So nice. It's really nice. That's awesome. Like, yeah. oh, that, now I want to mess with Thunder Nian Nian. Let's, let's kick ass. <laughs> um, but guys, uh, I think that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, we, we pretty much, I mean, we might have uh, forgot a few cards here and there, but like we pretty much, I mean, looking at this, this is like all the best Xerion replacements. I mean, I mean, it'll vary from deck to deck. Let's just say you're playing a water deck. I mean, Abyss Soldier is gonna be a, a better Xerion replacement, and then let's just say uh, Blade Knight or, or whatever. Um, it, 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 that's what we've been saying this whole video, though. It, it depends on what you're playing. We're just kind of throwing out the highest attack monsters that we can find that have desirable or good effects in the format. Um, mainly things that banish, get rid of cards, kill flips, or are just really big on attack in the case of Berserk Gorilla or in the case of Bazoo. Uh, Bazoo yeah. uh, both gets really high in attack, but that, when the case of Bazoo though, it gets really high in attack and will get over like problem cards like Parshath and Jinzo and, and Vampire Lord, which a lot of players will play. So it yeah. um, uh, depends on, once again, this, this uh, what you uh, replace Xerion Universe with will depend on your meta. It'll depend on what your deck does and what, you're, what you want your deck to do. And it'll also depend on you as a player. Uh, we just kind of did our best to list a lot of the best ones that uh, we use personally in all of our decks. Um, maybe, once again, maybe we forgot about a couple that are more obscure, yeah. but for the most part, that's it. Yeah. Subscribe! <laughs>